Good day and welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. In today's video, I'm gonna solve the problem that I mentioned on video 65 of buying a UTV in 2023. And though I call it a problem, it's more of a nuisance than anything. Let me show you. On a Kubota, you need both hands to open up the tailgate. And that could be annoying if you're holding a 50 pound bag of corn or anything else and then trying to open this up, unlike your pickup truck where you have one hand that can open it. And before we move on, I wanted to give a shout out to John from Frickin' Jeep. You should check his channel out. I have it listed below. Like me, John has a Kubota 900 as well, and he experienced the same issue that I did, and he came up with a fix. So I'm gonna show you how to take care of this issue. And with this repair, we're gonna be using a swaging tool. I don't know how many of you have used one of these things, but they're extremely handy. If you wanna fasten something on or not lose something, this is the tool you want. Now I've got a couple of different models here. And these swaging tools will accept from 1 16th to 3 16th ferrules. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. And if you're wondering about the cost, you can get them as cheap as $20. This one here, the blue handled one, is about $40. This one here is between $50 and $65. So they're very reasonably priced. So if you want to secure something and not lose it, swaging is the way to go. For me, I'm always losing hitch pins on my trailers and tractors. So I make sure that I swage a hitch pin and never have to worry about it again. Now here's a couple examples of where you would use a swaging tool and how beneficial they are. This dust cover for my boss plow is put on and they use this swaging tool here to hold this on so that it doesn't fall off. And if you check most trailers, you'll find out that the emergency brake right here is also swaged on both ends. And for me, I hate losing my hitch pins, as I said. So I will go ahead and install one on here so it doesn't fall down. And especially if you're driving and it should fall, you won't lose it. I constantly keep forgetting to put my diesel cap back on after I fill it. So I went ahead and swaged a cable on here. That way I can just untie it. And I know when I'm finished, it's just hanging around. And that way at least I won't lose it. Several times I've found it in a driveway after I forgot about it. Now I'm sure many of you are familiar with braided cable. And I use both stainless steel and hot dip galvanized cable. Occasionally I do use the vinyl covered braided cable, but the methods that I'm gonna show you, I have to peel off the vinyl coating before I could use this. You can buy any of the braided cable at your local hardware store or big box. They sell it by the foot or in a package 25 to 50 feet. The most favorite sizes that I use are 1 16th and 1 8th of an inch. And there's two types of braided cable, seven by seven and seven by 19. And what I mean by that is, if you take a look at it, the braided cable is not round, it's somewhat oval, and it has valleys in between each one. So the seven by seven is there's seven groups of braided cable, they're twisted together and they all look like one, but there are seven different groups of wire in there. I thought I could use standard electrician's dikes here that have a cutter on the side, or just basically wire cutters. And what I found after trying them is it just mashes the wire cable. Let me show you. In fact, this won't even work, and that's what you get. Just cable that's all mashed up. Even if I tried the regular heavy-duty cable cutter or, or wire cutters, I can't do anything with it. So I had to invest in a special pair of braided wire cutters. And these work fantastic, let me show you. And makes a nice flat cut. I brought you in closer so you could take a look at the difference between the hardware that's necessary for swaging. 
First thing we have here is the ferrules. These are the two different sizes that I use, the eighth inch and the one sixteenth. These are what you do to put an eye like this into a piece of braided cable. This on the end is a stop, so if you don't want something to go all the way through, you put that at the end of it. If you want to get a real nice eye, you use this thimble here and wrap the wire right around it and then put the ferrule at the end of it. And lastly, our wire clips right over here. If you don't want to use swaging, you can get these wire clips here and put a couple of them on. The only problem is this single one is stronger than these two put together. Odd as that may seem, but it is true based on the fact sheet. The other thing is occasionally you may have to tighten these nuts up because they loosen up. With this, once you put it on, it stays on. As you can see, there's different manufacturers that make this and they come in all different kinds of kits and sizes. Since I'm using a lot of these ferrules, they come in 10 pack, which is the most common one. Now that we've covered the ferrules, the thimbles, the stops and the wire nuts, let, let me show you how this goes together. You make sure that your wire is cut flush, thread the braided cable through one end of the ferrule here and go all the way around bring it in until you have a loop and then determine how big your loop you want it bring it down what you want to make sure is that your end here is double the size of your cable so this one's 3 16 so right about there so that when you crimp it there's enough material in the back to swedge. And the correct way to swedge this is make sure that this is in the vertical position, not sideways. Like you see there. And all you do is squeeze. and you get a perfect crimp or swedge. And the aluminum is such a soft material that it molds its way into each and every valley here in the cable. Let me show you now how it looks inside. That's what it looks like inside when it conforms to all the sides of the braided cable. Now that I've shown you all the swaging tools and accessories, let's get to the fix of the Kubota here. I need to drill holes in both sides of these handles right here. And since I can't use a center punch, I'm using my Dremel tool with a burr on it so my drill will stay in the center of it. That's all I needed to do. Now I'm going to use my drill to go through. And to remove the burr on there, I'm just going to use the sander right here. There it is. We're done. And do the same thing on this side. Okay, I've threaded the wire through the hole, put my ferrule on, gave myself plenty of room here to work with. Now I'm going to bring it to where I need it and then put the crimp on. Now I just take my crimping tools here, make sure I'm aligned properly, and squeeze. There we go, we got one end done. Now this part is not necessary, but I had some extra vacuum tubing and I fed this through the braided cable and I have something that's soft now, so just in case it should abrade and there's some uh, wires out there, I'm not going to get pricked in my hand. So now I'm, I already fed the ferrule through. I just have to install it on the end here and tighten it up. Now that I have it positioned properly, all I need to do is put a crimp on it and we're done.
Cut the tail end off here. One handed. And that's as easy as it gets. And now we solve the problem, one handed opening. And the other benefit of putting the vacuum hose on is it won't chafe or rub the paint off here and start rusting. I hope you found this informative learning about the swedging tools and how to repair the Kubota. There are many other uses for this type of a tool as I showed you before. So please like, share, and subscribe. And give me a thumbs up as well. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, have a great one.